My name is Amata and in this Red Gaming Tech video I have a couple of things for you and the first of which is a little bit of disappointing news for you Intel fans out there. Now the ever helpful guys over at Hardware.info did some testing and found an answer to a burning question that we all wanted to know the answers to, that is the intercompatibility between the sockets of their current line of motherboards and of course the upcoming which is the Z370. Now the TLDR of their testing is basically that you can't upgrade your KB Lake to the Z370 despite the fact that it has the same socket. Now at the moment at least, this does work both ways, so you can't use the 8700K with the Z270 or 170 either. However, in the case of these older boards, it might just be a BIOS issue as of course the chips aren't out yet, so of course there's no reason for those motherboards to support that chip at the moment. So that could be something that's added in a future update, but the Z370 obviously is going to be a brand new board and should already come with KB Lake support built in if Intel had plans for it. So it does look like that isn't going to be the case, which is a little weird, but I mean, it could be the case that it will be added, but it does seem a bit strange that it's not there and it does kind of pretty much confirm that this is not going to be the case that you could, that you can use the A700K on the old board, sorry, the uh, KB Lake on the new motherboard, should I say. So a bit of a shame there, but probably not going to affect too many people. It's obviously going to be the issue, I think the main issue rather, is going to be whether or not you can use the A700K with the Z270-170. And it is fairly reasonable to say that it might be added in a BIOS update. However, the next item on our itinerary is some more benchmarks for the 8700K. We have some CPU-Z benchmarks as well as Ada64 and Cinebench R15. Now, given that some stuff is blanked out, and obviously, you know, we've got Chinese as well. No, I can't, re I can't read Chinese. Um, it's hard to tell for 100% certain that these benchmarks are genuine, but they do kind of line up with previous leaks. And obviously we can see the C CPU Z score on screen right about now. And just in case you've forgotten, on CPU Z the top results are single thread and the bottom results are multi thread. And of course, in this case, it is being compared to a 7700K. And the results are fairly fairly favourable in the favour of the 8700K. I probably could have worded that a bit more uh, a bit more elegantly, shall we say, but I got the point across that we are seeing a nice improvement here of the 8700K versus the 7700K. Unfortunately, we don't have any such comparison for the Cinebench, but we of course do have various CPUs being listed underneath it, just not a direct comparison with the 7700K, unfortunately, and it does show a score of 1402. And you can see what I mean, mean here about part of the image being blanked out, which does kind of lend some suspicion to the legitimacy of this image. And of course, please do take it with a pinch of salt. When something is unconfirmed like this, it's always best to take it with a pinch of salt. You know, if it turns out to be right, then cool. And if it doesn't, then, you know, no harm done, basically. But you can see, again, it being compared to various CPUs and it doing fairly well. Now, as I said, we also have Ada, which will be on screen right about now, which is nice. It gives us a more complete image of what's going on. But we also have some Time Spy, Fire Strike Ultra, and Fire Strike Extreme results as well. Now, of course, I will be showing all of those results on screen, but I'm also going to be showing comparative results to the 7700K to give you an idea of how it performs. Now, of course, um, it does look like this rig used on these Chinese benchmarks was using a 1050 Ti. Um, not many people benchmarking on 3D Mark are going to be using that. I will try and find the closest I can. But what you re to be honest, it, the graphics card doesn't really matter because what we really want is the CPU score and obviously the physics score, that sort of thing. So if the GPU doesn't match, don't worry about it. We are more worried about the CPU specific tests. So we can get a fairly nice picture of how the seventy-seven, sorry, the eighty-seven hundred K is doing versus its predecessor. Again, do take these benches with a pinch of salt. But 
we are getting a rather nice picture indeed and they are showing some pretty nice improvements pretty much across the board now of course the real test is going to be when this card actually sorry this chip sorry not this card actually comes out and of course we can get our teeth stuck in and really get some you know, benchmarks going not only these ones here but of course gaming benchmarks as well and seeing how it does out in the wild so safe to say Coffee Lake is looking rather good to say the least and it's probably going to be quite the nice upgrade for many people Hopefully we can get our hands on a review sample so we can give you guys our full thoughts and opinions but these benches that we've had over the last couple of weeks and the picture of the performance that has been forming has been quite impressive to say the least and is definitely going to make Coffee Lake a part of many many builds to, to come in the future I would say. So with all that said thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.